Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Today we're going to be talking about lactated ringers or LR, a common intravascular fluid, IV fluid that we give. Uh, I probably give this every single time I'm working at the hospital. Um, so it's very, very common. Um, but we're going to talk about what is lactated ringers rather than what are lactated ringers. Let us know. Clinical uses of lactated ringers, acid base and electrolyte effects, contraindications and cautions, common myths, clinical pearls, and more. This is part of our intravenous fluid series. We'll link a playlist in this video's description on all of our IV fluid videos. We cover a lot of things, including physiology, different fluids, comparisons between them, when to use what and why, uh, different fluid compartments, hypertonic, isotonic, hypotonic, all that good stuff. Oh, Siri spying on me. Um, so definitely check out that playlist. In addition to that, we just wanted to um, pump our Patreon uh, community. We have a Patreon community we've been trying to buff up. We will post this video's study guide as well as practice questions on our Patreon page. We'll link our Patreon page in the video description. Uh, so check that out if you have an interest, want to learn more, want the study guide, practice questions, all that kind of stuff. Again, we appreciate you. There's a free membership as well as tiered membership. So whatever you're interested and capable um, of doing, we'd love to have you. Um, I think that's it for the shameless plugs. No further ado, quick 30 second break for introduction. Don't go anywhere, then we'll dive in. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's gonna be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. All right, lactated ringers. So introduction, lactated ringers, LR, is a balanced isotonic crystalloid fluid. If you caught a normal saline video, balanced here is in comparison to unbalanced, things like normal saline or NS. Because normal saline has supraphysiologic higher than physiologic amounts of sodium and chloride, right? We talked about that. Um, whereas lactated ringers is more balanced. It's more similar to the serum. It's isotonic, um, meaning it does not uh, exert tonicity on fluid across membranes. So if you were to put a cell membrane and you were to give LR, there would not be any crossing of fluid across that cell membrane. It's isotonic. The tonicity of the LR is similar to the intracellular tonicity. Um, again, we talked about tonicity in one of the previous videos, so definitely check that out. Uh, commonly used in trauma, surgery, burns, obstetrics. Um, at this point, it's commonly used really everywhere. Uh, we uh, in both the intensive care unit and the emergency department tend to use lactated ringers as kind of our go-to first line. Um, again, this is not medical advice, this is all opinion and education, but uh, yeah, that is, tends to be our practice pattern. It closely mimics the plasma's electrolyte composition and uh, it does include a buffering agent, which we'll talk more about. And this close mimic, mimic is why they call it balanced. All right, what is lactated ringers? Well, lactated ringers is an IV fluid, intravenous fluid, containing multiple electrolytes and a buffer. Um, the electrolytes it includes are a sodium at 130 milliequivalents. This is in comparison to normal saline, which has 154 milliequivalents of sodium. And the body serum, right, the normal, quote unquote, is 135 to 145 milliequivalents of sodium. Uh, in lactated ringers, there's 109-ish milliequivalents of chloride. Uh, this is compared to normal saline, which is 154. And the body, the serum, which I think is like a, about 105. Uh, potassium has four-ish milliequivalents. You'll see anywhere from three to four um, of potassium in lactated ringers. Normal saline does not have any potassium. And serum potassium, you know, normal is 3.5 to about 5.0-ish. Uh, it has calcium, 2.7 milliequivalents, none in normal saline. This is ionized calcium, um, and it's a little different uh, measurement than we used to. So we'll have to let us know in the comments. We'll have to do some research. We can't recall this measurement, uh, what the normal serum calcium is. And then it has a lactate, which is interesting, 28. They have milliequivalents per liter, um, but millimoles as well. Um, the thing to note, though, and the thing we'll talk more about is sodium lactate is what this form of lactate is. This is in comparison to lactic acid. 
And why is this important? Well, many of us in healthcare order a lactate. And when we order a serum lactate and it's elevated, it sometimes indicates that there's something bad going on. But that lactate we're ordering is actually lactic acid. This is different than the lactate in lactated ringers, which is sodium lactate. And we'll talk more about that. All right, the osmolarity of lactated ringers is about 273 milliosms per liter. Um, and this is, uh, serum is, you know, about 290. Oh, no, about 290. Uh, normal saline, we think it's like about 310. So what you can see here is normal saline, unbalanced, right? Not that close to serum. Whereas lactated ringers is fairly similar to the serum values. It is a balanced solution. And it's also isotonic. So when we say isotonic, what do we mean? If we go over here, uh, this is part of a lecture we did on fluid compartments, again, linked in the video description. There are two different main fluid compartments. There's the intracellular space and the extracellular space. And this is obviously separated by a cell membrane, okay? And when something is isotonic, it means its tonicity is similar in the intracellular space as compared to the extracellular space. And when it's similar, all right, you draw a cell membrane, you have, you know, whatever, 20 solute molecules and three solute molecules. Uh, water usually crosses the cell membrane from low solute to high solute, so that'd be H2O. But when something is isotonic, it's the same tonicity on both sides, so there's no traveling a fluid across the cell membrane. So when we think about the intracellular compartment and the extracellular compartment, lactated ringers will not cross the cell membrane from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment. It will just stay in the extracellular compartment. So if we were to go down here and we were to say, you know, you have your artery, arterial, capillary, venule, vein, and you give one liter of lactated ringers, right? And it's circling and it gets to the capillaries. Well, what we know is that none is going to go to the intracellular space but the extracellular space is composed of both intravascular and extravascular. And the extravascular space is like that interstitium between blood vessels. And that's actually 75% of the extracellular space is extravascular. Whereas one-fourth or 25% of the extracellular space is intravascular inside the blood vessel. And lactated ringers will actually travel and equilibrate between the intravascular and extravascular space. It will just will never cross, well, at least not initially, uh, into the intracellular space. So when you give one liter of lactated ringers, 25%, right, will stay, one-fourth, 25% or 250 cc's will stay intravascular. And the other 750 cc's will travel out into the interstitium. So 750 cc's will travel extravascular, all right, just to give you some context about how much stays in the blood vessels. All right, a key point, as we mentioned, is that lactated ringers is more physiologic than normal saline due to lower chlor chloride and an added buffer, which we'll talk more about. So clinical uses, uh, again, not medical advice, but we use LR for, you know, it's pretty much our go-to fluid unless someone's got traumatic brain injury or there's sodium derangements or there's something else going on. But common indications, trauma resuscitation, surgery, surgery burns, labor and delivery, acute pancreatitis, um, and really just people who need volume in general, um, all, um, uh, shouldn't say all, but many would benefit from LR over normal saline, possibly. The background here is that there's been tons of big studies, SALT ED trial, SALT ICU, um, I think Classics maybe was the name of another one, but don't quote us on that. Uh, but there's been a bunch of big time trials looking at normal saline versus lactated ringers. And some have favored lactated ringers, some have not favored either. Um, so there's kind of argument and disagreement in the literature on whether you should use lactated ringers or if it doesn't matter. We personally believe that lactated ringers is more physiologic and as such, that's the one we tend to grab first. Uh, the other thing to note here, lactate is metabolized by the liver to bicarbonate. So we mentioned that there is sodium lactate in lactated ringers. Sodium lactate is a base, so it buffers, so it can grab hydrogen ions. And when it does grab hydrogen ions, it can be turned into lactic acid, but it buffers these hydrogen ions. In addition to that, the liver converts it into bicarbonate to buffer. So this is a buffering, uh, a part of lactated ringers that buffers, and it can help with acidemia. 
as compared to something like normal saline, which does not have any buffering agent in it. They have studied lactated ringers, and they have studied whether it does increase lactic acid. And again, there's some mixed literature, but not to any large degree, uh, if anything, just to a small degree or not at all. All right, acid base and electrolytes, we'll probably keep talking about this, but LR has a lower chloride content. So this reduces the risk of hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. So if anyone watched our normal saline lecture, uh, we talked about how there's 154 milli equivalents of chloride in normal saline, and this can lead to a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis where increased amounts of chloride lead to the kidney excreting bicarbonate, uh, which then leads to a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis or NAGMA. LR doesn't have that problem, right? It has about 100 and nine milliequivalents of chloride, which is fairly physiologic, so it does not have the same risk of hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis that normal saline does. Uh, as we mentioned, it has lactate, sodium lactate, which acts as a buffer, helps maintain the pH. Uh, it helps correct metabolic acidosis as such. Uh, and then there is this idea that if someone has liver dysfunction, you might have to use caution because lactate metabolism may be impaired. We don't know of any actual literature that suggests this is true. We use lactate ringers in patients with liver dysfunction. Again, not medical advice, just opinion. Um, but this is something that people talk about, so we included it. Contraindications and cautions. So there's this idea, and we still hear people say this, that if someone has hyperkalemia, you should be cautious with lactate ringers because lactate ringers has potassium. We mentioned lactate ringers has, you know, anywhere from kind of three to four milli equivalents of potassium. But they've done trials on this and they've compared lactated ringers to normal saline. And since normal saline can cause this non anion metabolic acidosis, they actually find that more often normal saline leads to higher potassium levels and that LR is a reasonable and safe option for hyperkalemia. Our personal opinion is that it actually is a better option than normal saline, but that's not shared by everybody. Um, some people still suggest that giving LR in someone with hyperkalemia can lead to worsening potassium, but our personal opinion is that that is a myth. But nonetheless, we wanted to cover it. Uh, again, people talk about severe liver disease leading to impaired lactate metabolism. We don't know of any strong literature on that either. Um, blood transfusions is something to think about because as we mentioned, lactated ringers contains calcium, and as such, the citrate in blood products uh, can interact with that calcium, so you just got to be careful they're not compatible with the same IV. Um, and then we they have found that in those with traumatic brain injury, uh, normal saline is a better fluid option uh, because lactated ringers, it's isotonic, but it has less tonicity than normal saline, um, which is why normal saline is a better option um, in that group. And as we mentioned, there is calcium in lactated ringers, so calcium incompatible medications uh, can't run with lactated ringers. All right, five common myths. Lactic, oops, lactated ringers worsens lactic acid. Uh, as we mentioned, false, sodium, bica uh, sodium lactate is what is in lactated ringers. It's converted to bicarbonate. Uh, again, they have studied this. It probably doesn't raise it at all, at least as compared to normal saline. If it does, it's just a small amount, um, but that is myth number one. Myth number two, lactated ringers is unsafe with all medications. Not true, just those calcium incompatible drugs. Those are the ones you gotta think about. Uh, myth number three, um, the old adage used to be lactated ringers is only for surgery. That has totally kind of fallen out of favor and now uh, people, there's a couple um, exceptions to this, like we talked about TBI and sodium derangements, um, but lactate ringers tends to be a fair drug, a uh, fair fluid to use for, for almost everybody. Um, so no longer only for surgery. So if we look at clinical pearls, LR is a more balanced solution than normal saline, less likely to cause that non anion get metabolic acidosis, that NAGMA, all right? Uh, it's preferred in trauma, burns, OB setting, in our humble opinion, is uh, almost everyone, right, other than the TBI patients and sodium derangements. Avoid with blood products. Remember, blood products have citrate, which will interact with the calcium in lactated ringers. Uh, and monitor potassium and liver dysfunction. We don't personally believe in this, um, but that is something that people talk about. So if we were to look at this in chart form, lactated ringers, sodium content, 130 milli equivalents compared to 154 in normal saline. Chloride content, 109 milliequivalents compared to 154 in normal saline. Potassium, about four, three to four. No potassium in normal saline. Calcium, 2.7, no calcium in normal saline. Lactate, although this is sodium 
lactate, not lactic acid at 28. And remember, this can be millimoles. Osmolarity, 273, much closer to physiologic osmolarity. Um, normal saline is about 310. And then acid base, it does alkalinize because of that sodium lactate. So it buffers acidosis, which is nice. All right, hopefully that was a good foundational kind of basics uh, overview of lactated ringers, something that we give all the time. We're personally believer that fluids are medications, and as such, we should think about them. We should know what they work for, what they don't work for, what the risks are, when we should use them, when we shouldn't, um, rather than just kind of being more, quote-unquote, willy-nilly, throwing fluids at people. So let's know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. We'd love for you to check out our Patreon page, the study guide um, in this format. will be uploaded there as well as practice questions. Uh, leave some comments. Let us know what fluids you like. LR, normal saline, something else. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Check out that intravenous fluid playlist. And if uh, nothing else, stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.